Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Some of you in peace out to the rest of you. Hit the share button because the message is more important than the message. Let me give a shout out specifically to S. Jacques for this one. Um, thank you, bro, for coming through on a cash app. Uh, from the bottom of my black heart and from the depths of my black mind. Thank you. And um, also, thank you for that link that you sent. <clears throat> In uh, Indiana, a young mother with the last name Griffith showed up and um, she was at the hospital with her um, non-verbal three-year-old and uh, the boy's foot was solidly black due to frostbite, which pretty much means the foot died. Uh, it turns out that she and her aunt and mom live in this house with no heat no running water, boys three and nonverbal. Now what this tells me is uh, serious neglect. When she was booked, she stated that she had given birth to multiple children with no names or social security numbers, and that she gave birth to a pair of twins in a bucket and beat one to death so that the baby would stop crying. This is what she said. Sounds like somebody that's mentally disturbed. But her mugshot suggests that she's not used to being locked up and in captivity. Now, um, this is the gynocracy. They can say what they want about the community and about black manhood and our failures and our dustiness. This is the gynocracy in action. A lady, her aunt, and her mom living in a house with her kids with no running water. And I'm not going to sit up here and say that this is because they're black women, but I'm going to say that it's because they come from a lost value system and dysfunction because you've got these three adults. So can they afford rent and running water and heat? Well, when you have, here's the thing. A lot of these women are sitting up and saying that if there's a man in the house, ain't none of the women going to do nothing. They ain't going to contribute nothing. Is this not what they say? So since they can't be bothered to contribute once a man is in the house, but we also know that they hate the um, gender traditional roles and duties of maintaining it from the inside without securing the outside provision unless they voluntarily choose to do it, then what does that leave us with? Well, that leaves us with a bad deal that many of us are refusing to take more and more and more of us. And this also leaves um, these ladies having to do it by themselves, but not being ready to. Three adults in a house. There was no man in that house because neither of them wanted a man. That's what it boiled down to. And now because neither of them wanted a man. They're in a house with no heat and no running water in the winter in Indiana. I didn't say Louisiana. You know how those Midwestern winters are. They're nasty and they're brutal. I was in Ohio once during one of their mild winters. And I remember one of the days that was almost reflective of a true winter up in Ohio. I remember the temperature being uh, six degrees Fahrenheit, six and my car would never completely warm up. I had to just go ahead and drive to work with an engine cold. I remember the pain. I remember, uh, because that, that cold was painful, I remember um, that the inside of the car would never warm up. I remember having to still roll down or crack a back window because the humidity on the inside of the car was building up on the windows, collecting on the windows, and it was beginning to freeze and I was, uh, I was losing visibility. I remember that kind of cold and that was considered not really that cold. I was lucky that that winter was a mild winter and they were in this house in Indiana with no heat and no running water. 
and these kids in there. Now, when Miss Griffith, and I'm only saying Miss because I don't remember her first name, was arrested and booked, what she said right off the bat was that she had plenty of kids with no names and no social security numbers, and that she had beaten one to death for, to get it to stop crying. She admitted to this. Now, this is a confession. She seems to me like she's mentally off just based on that report, but nonetheless, she has to be, at least the, the confession has to be looked into. Now, they went to the house with cadaver sniffing dogs. I didn't hear about them finding an actual cadaver because she said she buried the baby herself. But what I do know is that she admitted. She gave a confession. They had to look into it. We also understand that she's probably mentally ill. She ain't normal, certainly. And what does this tell us? Either she's having fantasies about what she's done to kids that haven't been born or She's really having all these kids while being crazy. And this says, <coughs> this says something right there. We black men are in a, a, a stage right now in which we're phasing ourselves out of a certain way of thinking that has held us captive. The dream that I had a long time ago when I was a newlywed. In which my former high school was a, a plantation slash prison camp. But they never built walls or razor wire around it. And I just decided to walk off in the dream. It's not being realized by many of you. You are walking off. You are walking away from this plantation slash prison camp, this hyenocracy. So we're in that transition, but you are in the process of walking. There are more of us being awakened. It is not a majority yet. So right now, the chances are that uh, what we are seeing from these births if she really had all these kids is a combination of us going through sliding through and men of other backgrounds sliding through. That is what we're more than likely looking at brothers. You can say no to these crazy broads. There's a reason why people say, don't stick your dingling and crazy. It's going, they'll sit up and say, yeah, but they got the best you know what? It's going to be available because she's insane. That's pretty much what it boils down to. The gynocracy, as I told you, has functioned as a sexual labor union with the goal of making sure that in order for you to get some, you got to deal with crazy. That's the whole mindset. So I'm going to tell you now. That fortunately you're waking up and if we accelerate the pace at which we do wake up, then we can at least at the very least we can look at a situation like this and say, I know ain't but more than maybe one out of seven guys been one of us onyxes that had anything to do with a scenario like this. We will be able to say stuff like that. Right now we can sit up and say all them daddies ain't us. But we will be able to sit up and say hardly any of them daddies are us. That's what we will be able to do. Now, this is going to lead to its own problems. Problems are guaranteed in the life of this world. But we will get to determine that we, pu we, we push away a particular problem in exchange for another. Even when they seem to be sane, we need to be telling them no and turning them away. I'm with Jeremy Hill in one thing. I do not believe in accepting their excuses, but I do believe in understanding and being prepared for legitimate excuses. And a lot of these women have had something done to them, bad things done to them when they were younger and they were unprotected. And I don't think that's our problem to fix. It is, it's just not because you see when you have been uh, molested as a young boy and then you've got certain issues that bother you, you have to hide them, bury them away and compartmentalize them and keep those issues away from the women in your life that you later love. They didn't injure you. You're not allowed to bleed on them. Don't even bleed on them. You're not allowed to. And I understand that to a certain extent. That's fair. Likewise, they don't get to come to us as wounded birds bleeding on us and we didn't injure them. Nope. 
That sounds cold and heartless only in one direction, but not in the other. And that's the mother cuss word problem, because you see, when they get to a man that's tall and has those dreamy eyes, he can fake an injury and bleed on them and they'll sit up and try to heal him. It depends on what the injury is, even then. Let him find out that the injury came from women just mistreating him because they did not really value him. And all of a sudden, that's over. He's not who they thought he was anymore. That's another problem. But <clears throat> this gynocracy is failing. And what we're seeing is a situation that made the news. Maybe because of the mental instability and poor health of the mom and aunt and, and her uh, grandmom they were with her, or maybe due to um, just the temperatures giving a kid frostbite on it. Whatever the case is, let me tell you this. In the end, it boils down to this. That is not really as abnormal as we think it is. What we're facing right now is a scenario in which the gynocracy is going to become increasingly more and more and more like this. That's why we're hearing more and more of these stories. We're pulling out and we haven't even so much as all puns intended. We haven't even so much as become a, a majority that are red pill aware and leaving the gynocracy. We've been pushed away and others of us are voluntarily walking away preemptively. But from the few of us that have the minority of us that have, maybe it's not even a minority anymore. But from the, the, the percentage of us that have walked away, they are crumbling. And as BGS said, you don't really have to say F them kids. They are forcing you to say F them kids. They're not really forcing you to say it. You just have to look out for yourself. And by looking out for yourself, they will crumble. And the kids they insist on keeping in their clutches wind up suffering. What you see is what happens when you aren't in the picture. I left once, not leaving my family, as in leaving my wife and not being her husband anymore, but I geographically left. That was when I was working in Ohio for a short time. Uh, I geographically left to work and to earn money. And while I was up there, um, Some shadows in the house moved back in Atlanta. My wife told me about that, where if, um, the lights went out for a short time on the block, but some shadows in the house began to move. Like something was in the house, but there was no one in there except my daughter, well, my two daughters and my wife at that time. And my daughter turned, my older daughter turned to my wife at the time and said, I wish daddy was here. My wife was trying to drop a hint. <laughs> you should move back to Atlanta. But you see, at that time, I refused to because when I was in Atlanta, I wasn't appreciated because of the money I didn't make. Your simple absence really does cause catastrophes for these ladies. They just still don't learn to appreciate you. That's all it is. You're not there to fix the car. You're not there to even prevent the car from getting bad in the first place. You're not there for certain things. What do they start saying? I need a man so I can get this, 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 that, and the other taken care of. They still don't learn to appreciate you. It's all your own. They only can value you utilitarianly in the West. You're there to fix stuff. They're there to break it. That's the end of it. What does that tell you? A lot of young brothers think that something's wrong with them because they're always single. And I want you young brothers to understand that you being always single does not anymore mean that there's something wrong with you. There may be some things you could learn that would help you out with ladies, but it doesn't necessarily mean there's actually something wrong with you. And here's the thing. If you learned from these dating roaches in their courses how to attract bitches, so to speak, 
then your life would still be a headache because it would be full of bitches. They will come to you with the problems. I'm not calling women this. I'm calling bitches bitches. Hyena bitches. The point is that that's what's out there. So if you are usually single, you might want to start looking at the things that, that, that you think make you single and keep them up as a shield to make you invisible. Because being invisible in the market like where you live is a good thing. Honestly, it is a good thing because the women that are out there are actually not very far removed from Miss Griffith. They're not very far from mood. It starts with that lady on Angry Man's short clip that said, I need a man because I got all these symbols on the car lighting up. I don't even know what they mean. Child, I need a man to do this. No, he said to her rightly, you don't need a man. You need a mechanic. But what she was really saying is that it's, it's deeper than the car. That's why she said, I need a man. What she was really saying is it's deeper than that car. I don't want to spend the money to fix this. I don't want the time to fix it. I want a, a man so that I can say to him, let me use your car. You take my car to the garage or you fix it. That's really what she was saying. By you being absent, they got to figure it out themselves. They got you thinking that by them being absent, something's wrong with you. And they got a lot of you uh, uh, depressed about this sort of thing. And you don't have to be. Because in reality, by you being absent, their lives get worse and worse and worse and worse and worse and worse because they did not value you enough when you were young enough and when they were young enough and fine enough and childless enough. They looked at everything about them that was valuable and said that you didn't deserve it. And so by your absence, they began to suffer more and more and more, more than we even wanted. I hope that this has been a benefit to you. And again, thank you, S. Jock, for coming through on Cash App and with that link. And thank you all for listening. As always, Black Heart, Black Mind, Black Out, Asalaamu Alaikum, Black Heterosexual, Non Select Male Power because they don't like it, and Black Patriarchy until Extinction of Judgment Day. Thank you for flying again with us here on Jet Black Airways, where Jet Black is also a verb. Keep jetting black with us until the wings and the wheels fall off. Gender, justice, forever.